Okay, everyone. So we are out here with the Corvette um, and that ticking time bomb in one of my videos a couple before uh, a while ago has finally exploded. The valve train. I don't know if you saw it, if I was hitting that. The valve train, that ticking time bomb video is completely exploded now. So I noticed yesterday I'm getting a lot of loud clunking and clanking. You probably can't hear it on a video if I even try to um, get it going. You know, I'm going to try for you guys real quick. So if you can hear that clanking at the very end and at the beginning, it's like something is stuck in the exhaust um, up near the resonator. Um, I don't know what that is, but it has definitely has something to do um, with what's going on in the valve train. So last night, I kept hearing this clanking, and I've also noticed my oil pressure has dropped. Lose your herb hover around about 40 or 50 at idle. Now it's down to like 15 to 20 at idle. So I started checking the cylinder banks with my temperature gun here, and one of the banks is... Um, on the exhaust side is actually um, n this rocker was not was was cold. I mean, this uh, one of these banks was cold, so the rest of them were like two fifty three hundred uh, uh, 250 to three hundred uh, degrees while I was sitting here idling, and then one was like one twenty one thirty, and it was that one. So I pulled the valve cover off, um, and um, turned the car on while I was doing it, and this rocker was not moving. So I thought maybe it was a needle bearing, so I went and just checked the needle bearings. And the way I did that is, you know, here's the rocker right here. Kind of just looking inside, if you can see that little hint of silver in between these grooves, those are the needle bearings are. I looked at them, they look like they're all there, but I didn't want to disassemble it because I don't have a vise or the proper tools to disassemble it. So what I did is I used a brand new rocker. Where is it at? I don't know where it is. Here it is. I have a brand new rocker that was still in the packaging. Um, and I have a whole set of rockers still in the packaging. I put that on. Didn't make anything better. So I'm thinking I got a lifter problem. I don't really know what it is. So the first thing I'm about to go start doing is I'm about to jack the car up. I'm following um, Alex's advice. I like to call him Corporal Glenn, my friend from the military. Um, I'm going to jack up the car. I'm going to pull the oil filter off. And then I'm going to open up the oil filter and I'm going to try to figure out and see if I see metal shavings or metal chunks. And that will be my first first thing, my first indicator on what needs to be done next. If I got shavings and it's not a lot, maybe it's just a lifter. Um, I don't know. We're going to go from there. But right now, let's just jack up the car and pull the oil filter off. First, we're going to drain the oil too because all the oil is going to come out. So we'll drain the oil, catch it in a pan so that I can see what's actually in there. And um, if anything flows out with it, and then we're going to um, pull the oil filter at the same time. <sighs> okay, so I got the oil um, drained. I didn't see any chunks fall out. Um, I also ran my hand through there and tried to feel for anything. I couldn't feel anything like chunks. I did, however, like scoop it up, put it in my hand, and you can see, you know, very fine pieces of metal. Um, I don't think that's out of the ordinary um i'm gonna call um alex and ask him about it I also um split the oil filter in half and you can see um fine pieces of metal in here as well um i don't know if this is the way the oil filter is supposed to look like when you split it open but i'm gonna go and give him a call nothing really jumped out at me i didn't see any chunks I didn't see like a whole lot of metal. So yeah, we'll just keep going. Okay, so after talking to Alex, oil filter, everything kind of looked normal, just you know, the light flaking. So next thing I'm gonna do, move all this oil and shit out the way, and I'm about to start to get the work on disassembling the cylinder. Um I mean <laughs> removing the cylinder so I could get to this lifter. Um and fix <gasps> Sorry about that, and figure out what's going on. Um, so, I mean, you guys already seen my other videos on how to take out, take apart an engine, take about the the intake. So, I'm just gonna start with the electrical stuff first. I'm gonna disconnect the battery, 
Now I'm going to take care of the electrical stuff, um, intake, and then I'll probably get um, bring the video back on when I'm actually getting to the head because I've never shown you guys when I take, a, take apart a head. So, um, yeah, let's get going. Okay, so far we got the all electrical connections undone. Intake is off. Um, the next thing, and also the header's been disconnected, just separated just enough. So the next piece is um, I'm going to vacuum up all this dirt and debris. And then it's just kind of, oh, then I got to drain the coolant um, from the block as much as possible. Um, so I'm going to have to probably remove one of the uh, knock sensors, which are down there. And then the next step is pull the head. Well, also the rockers. That's really easy. Okay, everything's all cleaned up. Rockers are off. Um, I tried to drain the coolant, and I want it to be environmentally friendly, but there's not a um, drain plug underneath or a coolant plug underneath like where the knock sensors uh, were on the C4. So in the C4, the knock sensor is also you can drain your coolant from your block there. So when I take this head off, it's gonna be cooling all over the damn place. I tried to do the right thing, but hey, that's what's gonna happen. So let's go ahead and pop these uh, three, four, five here on the top, probably another five at the bottom, and another five at the bottom, and then these smaller ones at the top. I'm hoping I can get the bottom ones with the impact. Um, I, I doubt it, I don't know. Especially with the exhaust in the way. Uh, we'll see, maybe I'll go down there and loosen it up a little bit more, maybe I can wedge. We'll see. All right, let's go. Okay, so we got the head off, cylinder head, and we took the lifter tray out. So this is the one that will be causing me issues. Uh, one thing I did notice when I pulled the head off that it was full of, of um, fuel in this specific chamber for this one. Uh, so let's see. So... From initial inspection, I do see it's turned. Um, see that one straight. I see that one turned. See that one straight. I guess I'm gonna pull this other one off and check it too. Um, I guess I might end up pulling the other head just to check them off. This one's turning. And that one's starting to turn over there. So I'm gonna call uh, uh, Alex, Alex Glenn here in a second and let them take a look before I touch anything else. So one thing, one thing that I am noticing is that on all of these lifters, if you even look at them, um, they're all raised a little bit um, outside of their, um, where they fall into, the little channel. And this one is the only one that's almost flush or barely rose out. But yeah, every single one of them are out a little bit sticking out and this one's almost near flat it's barely it's barely out so uh alex didn't call so i'm gonna take a couple pictures then i'm gonna um then i'm gonna go ahead and pull it out all right everyone we got major problems here um the lifter right here I'm trying to pull it up it only comes up so far and then it um, actually gets stuck and it won't come up any farther um, I'm gonna go take a break from pulling on it me and uh, Glenn uh, were talking about it on the phone as I was trying to work through it but it's just not coming up at all so um, so yeah I'm gonna take a break from it think about it um, but yeah let's just see what I'm uh, I'm also gonna call Corey tomorrow. See what the next steps are.